In this video, I want to show you an exercise that I'll do before I start working on other things in the studio. It's a way to warm up and have fun, and it's a great way to get started without all the pressure. The last couple of years, I have been really focused on painting in a looser and more expressive style. This is something that has been difficult for me because I come from a background of painting very detailed, realistic renderings of flowers and landscapes. But my painting style has gotten a lot more expressive and loose over the years, but it has not come easy. So today I wanted to show you a fun and expressive way to start your painting routine. I love to do this and sometimes I will paint like this for hours just for the sheer joy it brings me. You saw that I started with very few pencil marks. And this is just to get started and they are not meant to be literal representations of the flowers. Now I'm going to add some warm red using a large brush. Using a large brush is crucial here and so is using a limited number of colors. In fact, if you are looking for ways to loosen up your painting style, I want to give you something. I want to give you my free guide called Five Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style. Inside, I share my best tips to elevate your paintings quickly. See the link below the video for the free guide or go to my website www.danishpainter.com At this stage of the painting process, I am uh, scratching and making some marks into the paint while it's still wet. I'm using the opposite end of my paintbrush, but you could also use a painting knife instead. Now I want to work a bit on the background colors. I'm not using a photo or anything as a reference, but I do know that I want different green colors for the background. I want some more yellowish greens and some darker, uh, cooler greens. And I'm just, I'm using these very few colors, so a limited palette. And then I'm just going to mix different greens using the, those four colors that I have. The yellow green colors will kind of um, depict the sunlight hitting uh, some leaves and the darker greens will be uh, where the leaves or the grass or the flowers are in shade. So I'm not uh, doing a literal um, trans translation of uh, what I see. I'm just kind of I'm working to um, make an interesting abstract pattern around the flowers, you could say. So to create a, um, a balance of lights and darks and uh, warm and cooler greens. My reused painting tape is starting to let go in certain places, so I'm just going to press it down a bit more. The human brain is amazing and our imagination is limitless. Our brain needs very little information before it starts making connections and give us suggestions about what we might be seeing. This is really good news for those of us who struggle with adding too much detail in our paintings. Because it means that a simple, bold brush stroke can be interpreted as a red poppy flower. Or we can add a few foreground grasses and our brain will connect the dots and make us see the whole field. We don't have to literally paint every blade of grass. 
I really love these big chunky wooden pencils. If you don't have these you could also use pastels, watercolor pencils or crayons. Try using what you already have and see what kind of marks you can make. Notice how I'm making the marks rather quickly. I don't want to overthink. And this uh, is shown at normal speed. Now that I have worked on the background a lot, I want to add some darker contrast to the red flowers themselves. I added around the center of the poppies where they tend to be darker. One way to unify the foreground and the background is to tie them together using some of the same colors in both the foreground and the background. I feel I can um, get some more uh, depth into the painting by using some of these dark warm colors from the flowers. Uh, I'll use them in the background as well.
The painting is almost fully comprised of warm colors. So let's introduce some cool colors consisting of a cool bluish green. I've added a bit of titanium white to lighten the value and that also makes the color more opaque which is a nice contrast as well to the transparent reds and yellow greens. I am happy with my bold brush marks and expressive mark making and I want to stop and assess before I start adding all sorts of details. I know myself and I know this will happen if I continue to paint. So let's peel off the masking tape to have a better look. After looking at the paintings for a while and assessing, I feel I need to add a few small touches of yellow-green to the center of the flowers. This is actually the part that is the seed pod of the poppy flower. Poppy flowers are both fragile and strong at the same time and they usually only last for a day, at least where I live here in Denmark. If you pick them and take them inside, the, the petals will fall off. So to make them last longer, I like to paint them. Another way to make the beauty and joy last longer, and I love this, is to cut out these small paintings and use them as cards or postcards. In fact, I thought it would be fun to send one of these small paintings to one of you, one of the followers here on the Danish Painter YouTube channel. So if you'd like to receive a small original poppy painting by good old-fashioned snail mail, leave a comment below the video and you are automatically included in the draw. And don't forget to uh, get your free guide on how to loosen up your painting style. Links are below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.